I cannot even begin to tell you how excited I am to do this. This is Stevie Wright doing Evie, parts one, two, and three live at uh, Sydney Opera House. And this is Matt Crisquolo coming to you up close and personal. I did, Stevie, I did a reaction video uh, uh, to this particular, you know, Evie thing. Uh, and I, and, but it was, you know, not the live version. It was probably a studio version or something like that. And, and it was amazing. I loved it. And I, I, I'm, me, I'm talking to so many great Australians uh, through this channel. It, it's just mind-boggling. I love it. It's beautiful. And I'm learning about all these great artists. But Stevie Wright and this song, I can't even wait. So let's get right to it, shall we? Oh, and by the way, this came requested by a supporter of the channel who bought me some coffee. Uh, his name is uh, Ken Jones. So, Ken, this is going out to you. Sorry it took a minute. people. You know, man, I'll tell you, tempo of the song is super, super important. If this was a little too, if this was slower, it probably wouldn't have the same kind of momentum uh, for obvious reasons. It might sound really good, you know, even slow. We don't know. I never heard it that way. Sometimes they do sound great when you slow a song down. But this one, you could almost even play even brighter, you know, a little faster too. But where they have it right now, it's in the pocket and it's, hmm. You know, on my other reaction video that I did of this song, I had somebody commented and said that he thought I was bullshitting, that I wasn't enjoying it that much. <sighs> That's what people, you know, we all probably do that to a certain degree, but I think he's projecting. Maybe he wasn't digging it so much, but shit, I am. I love this shit. I mean, I don't like all rock. A lot of rock, a lot, a lot of rock songs sound like... You know, the composers you know, didn't know how to pl play any anything except the white keys on the piano. <laughs> they just don't need the black keys. So it sounds very diatonic, you know, very consonant, and it doesn't really have movement and colors that I like because there's a lot of colors. That, but these guys, you know, but you could still do that and pull it off if you if you make up for it with other elements of the music you know whether that be the passion the drive the intent the feeling you can make you know it doesn't have to be musically complicated but um i don't know where the hell i was going with that but i enjoy this man i just enjoy this but he does get into some other shit too when I, when he goes to parts two and three there's some nice interesting things going on. I'd love to hear Jack White do this from uh, from the White Stripes. Mm -hmm. 
And what I meant about the white keys on the piano, by the way, sorry to interrupt so much, but I want to clarify. Um, when you're writing music, and let's say you're using the piano to write the music, you know, your composition tends to reflect your, your, your abilities on the piano. A lot of the time it does. You'll hear a lot of pop and rock musicians where they don't really know how to play the piano so well, but they write on the piano. But because they're, they have limitations with, you know, knowing how to play more chords and more, you know, movements and passing chords and, you know, chord progressions and things like that, they, they tend to like play, it sounds, a lot of it sounds pretty boring to me, but... Um, anyway, again, I don't know where the hell I was going with it. look like a fender bass hey by the way this may be the actual song that i heard but without the without the live video i don't know now i'm curious yeah I gotta tell you, those Fender jazz basses, man. Those Fender basses, they got a, they got a sound, man. just remembered what this song is about i'm not going to say it you can put it in the comments below i learned that from you guys what the song was about i had no idea and now of course i'm listening to it with uh now when it came to this part of the song i'm gonna hear it i hear it now man You. 
That's really beautiful, man. <laughs> man, it makes me want to go in to go see my wife in the room next door and give her a hug and kiss and tell her how much I love her. You know, it's just, you Australians, man. You, you know, you got Farnsey. You got, you know, I, I got to tell you, man, Stevie Wright, I, I don't know anything about him. This is the second time I'm actually hearing him. Now, maybe I have heard him and I didn't know who I was listening to. I don't know. But I got to tell you, man, what I love, I love the way this guy sings. He's got a great voice. He's got a really great voice. And the way he uses it, the way he articulates and phrases, he doesn't really hang on the notes most of the time. He'll leave a lot of space. And it, it gives a nice buoyant feel and you can hear the rest of the band and, it, and the rest of the music. He's not dominating it. I, I know that because I've personally made that mistake myself mistake i personally have done that and i'm not crazy about that i did that you know uh with certain recordings that i've done i just held on to the notes for you know but that's a personal thing that's the way matt crisquolo feels about it but i mean i can appreciate when i hear him doing it and, you'll, and maybe you'll notice now that i've mentioned it it's kind of like a bob dylan-ish kind of approach he's not really he just puts it out there and boom that's it little jimmy scott with you know, there's a lot of great musicians that that do that, and it's just a, 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 a just a, a concept and a style. But yet, there are other times where he does hold the notes out, and so he's basically he's he's great. Shit. Yeah. Mm. Fucking a man.
Yeah! Check this out, man. The way they... I'm going to play that again. La, da, 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 da. They say they're anticipating it. They're not playing... They're not seeing it like... Da, 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 da. That would have been fine, too. But they were like... Da, 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 da. One, two... Man, that was badass. I'm going to play that again. Yeah, on this whole vamp, on this outro that they're doing, man, I would have really liked to have heard, you know, the drums open up a little bit right there, you know, just, just kind of like, you know, throw in some bombs and splashes and just, you know, don't just stick on the, don't just play the rhythm, but, you know, that, but it's, you know, they know what they're doing, you know, it's just me, it's just little old me. Shit, man, that was a different era. Those musicians were they, they 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 had some stuff. They had some, you know, they had some I mean they do now too. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of guys out there that are great. I'm not gonna, you know, say hey, only back then. But I think back then, maybe more of the musicians, even the rock musicians, had some kind of connection to jazz and you know they weren't just told there was a that part of their roots and their history that it was there you could hear it i mean even in that last chord they played a dominant nine chord you're gonna hear that now in rock once in a while you know god forbid but you know um i mean it's just really great stuff man i, I love it so much i love that that was really wonderful um you know I love. I, it was like three songs. It was like a suite, man. It was like three three songs. It, it, it started out with a certain tempo, medium up, 
and then it went down to you know like a like a a ballad you know almost yeah basically and then it ended with the you know an up tempo thing you know that i was i was so pleasantly happy and surprised that it did that because i thought that was a great way to go out and it just the whole it was like a you know had like this story it was like a story and it is a story if i understand it correctly a tragic story and did he write this song? I mean, please let me know in the comments if he wrote, if he wrote this. I got to know more about, you know, what is he is he is he only a singer or did he actually write this? Did he was he a composer? Could he play guitar or piano or drums or whatever? You know, what's the story with the with the Stevie Wright? Anyway, really dug it. So happy about that. Thanks again um for um Ken Jones for mentioning it and for the support. Hey, look, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And you take it easy. If it's real easy, take it twice.